Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking us out. Today we have a noise. And oh, we're going to find that noise. I'm trying to figure out if it's coming from the front or the back. And rather than laying on the ground and letting her drive over me, we decided to throw it up on jack stands. Now, listen, we are trained professionals. <clears throat> kind of. So don't try this at home. Very dangerous. Lots of bad stuff can happen. But anyway, we jacked it up, put it on jack stands, first the back, and we jacked the front up, and we just waited to hear that sound, and oh, dang, did we hear it. Angry sparrows chirping. Yeah, you do a deep dive on the threads, and you will find this is a real thing, and that was our problem. What is angry sparrows chirping? Well, come along and we'll show you. So now it took a minute for everything to warm up and for us to actually hear the noise. And once we heard it, it was so painful because we knew what it meant. It meant we were ripping apart that front drive shaft. So we let it run and turn the wheel a little and listen for every single U-joint, praying it was just a U-joint. Well, it wasn't. And we sprayed a little bit of lube on some, some parts and the noise didn't go away. And, and then we hit that front drive shaft, that double cardon joint. Oof. The noise went away and we had just ripped this thing apart about six or eight months ago and uh, it took about that long for the grease to get pushed out of that joint so now it's time to actually rip it apart and fix it this time instead of just pushing some grease into it so step number one Take the front drive shaft out of max. Now with a stock skid plate, this is a very easy thing to do. But when you put a five and a half inch long arm kit on it, and that skid plate is from Rusty's Off-Road, that thing is massive. It's, the, it's a belly pan. It's not a skid plate anymore. You could literally turtle this thing on a rock and not break it. It's so big and beefy. But that doesn't leave a lot of room to get your hands up in there. So of course, yeah, I made the kid do it. So with that drive shaft out, now it's time to just double check and make sure that that was the noise because I was still in denial. I didn't want to rip this whole front of this drive shaft apart. Cause that means you've got to replace every single joint. Well, you don't have to, but if you got it apart, you might as well do it right. And uh, yeah, that noise was gone. Well, let's get it into the shop and Get some PV blaster sprayed on some stuff so it comes apart a little easier. Let it soak. And I think this time we're going to make somebody else do all the work. Well, it is her Jeep. So, first things first, we got to clean up a little bit. You know, it's a shop. It's not supposed to be clean all the time. Then start banging out those clips and... I mean it, you're going to need to bang them apart a little bit, a little screwdriver action, get them moving, and you know, once they're free, you might be able to get them with a needle nose, but you're going to replace them and use away, so I just typically just hit them until they fly out. And then it's time to get that ball joint press out, which surprisingly works really good on U-joints too. And I found, I don't have a vise yet, it's on the list waiting for a sale at my favorite store, but I had to screw the ball joint press down 
just to stop it from moving because there weren't enough hands to keep everything straight. But with that thing immobilized, just moving the drive shaft around and getting it at the right angle, that was a lot easier. Now, the middle part of this video, it is a little long, but I wanted to stress to everybody how long it actually takes to push all these U-joints out. It is not a quick process, even with a press. Now, could you imagine doing this with a socket and a hammer? Could you do it? Sure. Should you do it? I mean, I guess if you're on the trail, maybe and you don't have a choice, do it then, but gosh. And then reinstalling everything and your bearings falling down and it's just so much easier with a ball joint press or a U-joint press. I had a couple spare joints in boxes yet, so we tried these spicer greaseless joints, but they just didn't have the right cups where the caps sat in. It just didn't work. It didn't matter what I did. It wasn't going to work. So time to call this guy. And yeah, Amazon, again, cheapest place to get the parts from. So a few days for those to come, and then it's time to throw this thing back together. So put the three new joints in. Two on one side, one on the other, the new cardon joint, line everything up. Make sure the grease fittings are where they're supposed to be. There's a little indentations and well, you'll figure it out. And that new seal around the cardon joint, which I'm probably not, I don't care if I'm saying it right or not. You get the point. Slam this thing back in, take it for a road test. Squeaking gone. Another successful fix until she runs it through the first freaking mud puddle again. Well, anyway, that's why we have tools, right guys? Anyway, thanks for checking us out. This was our Angry Sparrows Chirping. Yeah, that's what everybody's calling it. Or how to replace a double card on joint, which I'm probably not saying that right anyway. Well, thanks for watching everybody. Go anywhere do anything. We'll see you next time.